Warning, the following video contains explicit language which may be offensive to some viewers or inappropriate for children. The content within this video is intended for mature audiences only. Hello, good people. How are you doing? Um, hope everything's going great. I really appreciate everyone who's been listening to any of the playlists and all the playlists. Um, today we are going to jump back into the Black Tapes. Season 1, Episode 3, The Unsound. Um, so... Let's get on with this. What he said, but apparently she was now willing to speak with us. He said he had some time tomorrow before the conference. I met him at his hotel for lunch before we were scheduled to meet Jeff Wendt's mother. So yeah, um, getting these interviews in and knocked out is uh, going to be a good thing. So how did you talk her into an interview? Mrs. Wendt has convinced her son was somehow harmed or perhaps possessed by evil spirits. I mentioned this is something I had a great deal of experience with. I told her I'd take a look. Can I ask you something? Of course. Why are you so interested in these black tapes of mine? If you asked me to imagine what kind of show a former Pacific Northwest Stories producer might create, this type of thing wouldn't be my first or second guess. Yeah, but I don't think you've ever listened to Tannis or Rabbits or Fairies or any of those um, other things that they've done, so yeah. The black tapes are really interesting, but they're only part of the story for me. I got into radio because I wanted to be Ira Glass or Terry Gross. Uh, um, media... Old school media sensations. I guess by today's standards, they would be very old school. Not Scooby-Doo. <laughs> Exploring the motivations behind somebody so driven to disprove the existence of anything supernatural, that's what I'm really interested in. Me. I'm interested in the truth. Then we're interested in the same thing. So, it makes you wonder if that... It's not so much about disproving the supernatural as it is finding a, a, a common ground or a, a, the truth of whether or not it's there or not. There's something in the last episode of our podcast that I'd like your approval on before we upload it to the server. I'm not going to include it if you'd rather I didn't. It sounds ominous. Can I play it for you? Here. I have it on my phone. Go ahead. Let's listen to it. During one of our interviews in San Francisco, Dr. Strand told Robert Torres and myself that he was never married. The truth is, Strand was married, and his wife went missing under very mysterious circumstances in 1997. Now, I suppose he might... Yeah, this is... Yeah, this is when the... Uh, when, the when the chickens come home to roost, as we say lie about something like this to protect his privacy. But if he's willing to lie about his wife, what else might he be willing to fabricate? That is the $100 million question. You're investigating me? Not really. Or, not exactly. I'm... I'm guessing you just didn't want to share your marital status with Robert Torres. Fair enough. But? But... And again, I'd like to reiterate. But is a big, huge, giant word in these circumstances. Great, that I'm not going to air any of this stuff without your consent. But, to be honest, I got into this, like I said, because... You wanted to be Ira Glass and not Scooby-Doo. Exactly. I just feel like this show has evolved into something really interesting for our audience. Not just the tapes, but everything surrounding you and your work. The whole soup. I think the supernatural all will always have a certain amount of appeal to it, with it, you know, having high points and low points, but always there's going to be an appeal for it. I'm including my own conversations with my producer Nick about my process, 
and my mistakes, nothing is out of bounds. If the response to episode one is any indication, our audience is a lot more interested in you. Yeah, um, plus play, like I said in an earlier video, it also plays the whole Muller and Scully av uh, avenue too. Than in me. Oh. I started the show because I wanted to learn about people, to profile human beings by filtering them through their occupations. I just, I don't want to get too far off course. Yeah, um, it's kind of cool. Do you feel like you're getting far off course? Honestly? Why not? I'm not sure. Like I said earlier, I'm interested in providing balance to the paranormal conversation. If you think my personal life is of interest for some reason, I suppose it's fine. And, you know, that right there says, either tells you he thinks he's got all his skeletons cleaned up and hid real well, or he doesn't have any skeletons. One of the three. That's not exactly a ringing endorsement. What do you want to know? Do you mind talking about what happened with your wife? Not at all. It's not. Yeah, um, that, that just seemed like a really long pause. Not much to tell, I'm afraid. She disappeared on the highway. We were driving down the coast to Big Sur. Stopped at a gas station. I went in to pay, and when I came back, she was gone. Now that could have that could be a hundred million different things, but in this universe, it's usually the worst paranoia, crazy thing you can think of. That must have been horrifying. It was. So Strand was willing to talk about his personal life, and it looked like, for the moment at least, that I was going to get the show that I started out trying to make. This was all great, but there were a few things Strand left out regarding his wife. The fact that he was the prime suspect for a very long time, the fact that his wife's parents went on record saying they thought Strand was responsible, and finally, the assault of a psychic who had been hired to look into his wife's disappearance. Let's look at these things logically. First of all, the husband is always the prime suspect. And yes, it is. And the police eventually ruled Strand out and switched their focus to a serial murderer working in the area around this time. As for the parents, well, my parents barely tolerated my last boyfriend. This so yeah, I, I get, yeah, you know, um, that whole kind of grudging the 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 you're fucking my daughter thing. Psychic, however, is more interesting. It turns out she settled in civil court right after she dropped the criminal charges. More on this later. This is where we like to watch TV. He liked crime dramas. And, yeah, um, I have a feeling that all the un unsolved threads, like in episode one, episode two, episode this episode, I have a feeling that all these threads are going to be um, at some point down the road are going to all come together and we're going to see the big picture. Absolutely. That's Jeff Wendt's mother. She's clearly still in deep mourning. Jeff could have easily afforded his own house, but his mother told us that he liked living here, in the house he grew up in. Are any of your family members? That's, that has to be a generational thing. Um, I'm going to be honest, I couldn't wait to get out of my parents' house. And I love my parents. Visited them every chance I got. But, you know, I, I, I was, I grew up in a generation where lingering around your parents' home after, you know, a certain point was just kind of frowned on. Whereas my sister-in-law, who's in her 30s, is still living with her parents. Like I said, it's, and she's got a pretty decent job. And I mean, the price of housing and stuff in Houston is atrocious, but you know, so yeah, I wonder if it's a, a general, a generational thing where even if you have the money that you just live there and take over, you know, the, 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 you know, the bills and stuff, because you have the money and you're kind of there to take care of your parents, 
now that they're older and retiring and stuff like that. And it may not be a bad thing, to be honest with you. Who's here with you? Jeff's older sister, Alice, moved back down to Portland. They keep inviting me down, but there's just so much to do. She took us on a quick tour of the main level of the house. She wasn't comfortable taking us up to his room, but she did show us the garage, where Jeff spent most of his time. Yeah, that's... Yeah, that's kind of... That's kind of interesting theory, though. If you If you make it big... Yeah, I just, I keep pondering that theory. If you, you know, you make it to the point where you have excess amounts of money to still live with your parents, but take over as the primary caretaker. In essence, the, the, the child becomes the parent financially. Hmm. I'm going to have to contemplate that for a while. That's his recording studio. That's where I found him. I'm sorry. That must have been awful. It was. I'll be right back. Okay. The mamas that was didn't that kind of sounded kind of sus to me, just to be honest with you. Of course. She hadn't stepped foot in the garage since she discovered her son there. Nothing had been touched. It was as if Jeff were still alive and about to walk into his studio to pick up where he left off. There were a bunch of guitars hanging on the walls. A few keyboards set up next to a small mixing board. The computer he used for recording was still on. Yeah, that, that, that's chewed up some electricity. What are you doing? He was in the middle of recording something. Do you think it's weird that the police didn't take his computer? Not really. I think this is it. This. Not really bad, to be honest with you. What passes for music now? <laughs> Come on, it's a work in progress. What are you doing? This is the same program we use in the studio. I'm just gonna mute some of the tracks. Yeah, um, that would be cool. I would love to. Uh, at some point, I would love to have the money to get a editing software where I could come in and it broke my audio down into multiple tracks. I could take out like background noises and stuff but you know that would be kind of cool to do though at some point interesting yeah it had a pretty good beat to it by interesting do you mean extremely dramatic and creepy why would he layer the unsound underneath everything else? I know, you can't even hear it when it's mixed in with the rest of the instruments. And... ba 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 boom We're getting creepy. Oh, wow. What? Do you see this? What am I looking at? I'm guessing you don't illegally download music. <laughs> I just... I love it. That's just that's just a, that's just such such a has that nineties callback for me that you know the whole Napster thing. And now you got the torrent sites for like movies and TV shows and stuff and I guess still music. I pay for music and movies just like everyone else. Right. What is it? It's a torrent file. What's that? He's seeding this song. Seeding? Yeah, he's, um, he's made it available for download, for free, anywhere in the world. How many people have downloaded it? Just over six million. Yeah, that's a couple of people. So, was it a demonic summoning? Was there some mystical power in the unsound that forced Jeff Went to commit suicide in such a violent fashion? Did I? And the more than six million people who downloaded that song have less than a year to live? Six million people. That's a lot of people. Strand seems to think it's all easily explained. Well, it's obvious, isn't it? Is it? He was a gifted yet troubled young man who didn't seek medical attention. And it doesn't help that his mother fed into the whole occultism. What do you mean? The scientist here does strand, our boy Strand does have a point here. A very valid point. 
Did you get a look upstairs? No. That entire second floor was a shrine to Jesus. There was some pretty violent crucifixion imagery there. Not your basic Sunday school material either. Little Raiders of the Lost Ark type stuff. Yeah, that could be kind of creepy. Expe I imagine for a scientist, stuff like that is like just above and beyond creepy. So, it's all easily explained. The unsound is natural, but not demonic. The suicidal musician is troubled, but not possessed. Sure, the Antarctic research team all died within a year in 1962, but that's where the myth began, rather than proof of its potency. And that's a very, very valid point. But what about Travis? You remember Travis, Strand's assistant obsessed with digging up strange things in the deep web? Travis, who successfully tracked down the underground recording of The Unsound? I asked Strand why Travis Collingwood left his team, and Strand told me that his grant ran out. This is true. What Strand didn't mention, however, and what he may not actually know, is that Travis Collingwood died four months after leaving the Strand Institute's employ. That's kind of spooky again. Spooky after sp spooky within spooky within spooky. He was hit by a cyclist and thrown into a bus. That's one thing about, you know, the Minnow Beach Whale stuff. Um, the rabbit stuff. Um, all the other stuff. The black tape stuff. Tannis and stuff. They kill an awful lot of people that way. You know, people on motorcycles getting hit people in car crashes they yeah the you know that's you know in in the the minnow beats well public radio alliance universe stay out of cars stay off motorcycles walk you're safer that way he died instantly Are there some things that just feel different, strange, powerful? Or does it all really depend on what you believe, what lens you choose to use, which filters you decide to apply? And I think a lot of that, your filters and how you, how you view your world comes into play on how you look at these kinds of events. I'm Alex Regan. This is the Black Tapes Podcast. We'll be back again next week. So, once again, I hope everyone's enjoying everything. Um, I enjoy doing these videos. Um, I will be Saturday, tomorrow, in fact. Today is the 16th of August, 2024. And tomorrow I will be trying to, or I'll be posting. I recorded it earlier, and I will be posting a full length or not a full, yeah a full length i guess i don't know longer length bonus length i don't know um you tell me in the comments below um video it's going to be between 30 and 45 minutes long it's going to be a whole episode of a podcast that i chose and i'm waiting to surprise everybody with it so until next time everybody be good human. Be good to other humans. Peace. Hey, it's 10 p.m. Do you know where your children are?